Hey guys, welcome back. So in the previous video, we started building a model project by using different AWS services we learned so far. So the project was e-commerce website. Just a small recap. The project had some functional requirements and it had some non-functional requirements as well. So we looked at five pillars of well-architected applications even before we think about the AWS services that we are going to use. We chose different AWS services afterwards by favoring these five pillars, security, reliability, performance efficiency, cost optimization, and operational excellence. So finally, we concluded with our front-end, back-end, and different other services. For the front-end, we thought of using AWS Amplify library. And as for the front-end deployment, we thought of using S3, CloudFront, and Amazon Certificate Manager, Web Application Firewall, and Route 53. For the backend, we thought of going serverless with API Gateway, Lambda, and DynamoDB. And there was another functional requirement for searching. So in order to implement search, we thought of using AWS Elasticsearch Managed Service. For authentication and authorization, we will be going ahead with Cognito, and the application had some non-functional requirements as well. So we discussed all these things in the previous video. So if you guys didn't watch it, I will post a link up here. And today's focus is the architecture diagram. So let's get into the drawing tool. So we are going to build on AWS. So this is what this particular boundary means. So let's start designing our architecture. So we'll start with the front end. Now, the front end that we propose is a serverless architecture. So it has our web application on S3 bucket. And we have a cloud front in front of the web application to cache the content and deliver it quickly to the users. And on cloud front, we have applied a certificate from a Amazon Certificate Manager to support SSL and HTTPS. And also, we are going to apply web application firewall rules on cloud front as well. We discussed in the previous video, web application firewall can be used to mitigate all common web attacks like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, etc. So we are going to use Cognito as our authentication and authorization provider. So when the users logged into the application via Cognito sign-in sign-up page, and if, uh, if they successfully logged in, they will be directed to the CloudFront via our DNS service, Route 53. So at CloudFront level, the WEF will first take precedence and it will check all the requests, whether they are legitimate requests. So if it finds any rule violations, it will discard the request. And if the request is valid, then the CloudFront will check if it already has the website cache. If it does not has the cache, it will talk to the S3 bucket and get the latest content and deliver it to the front end user. So the next time the user is calling for the website, it will be delivered from the cloud front since it has cached it before delivering it to the user in the first case. So that's our front end architecture. It's a serverless architecture and it's quite scalable. So how about our back end? So for the back end, we are going to use an API gateway so API Gateway is our managed API. Let's say there's a user who logged into the application successfully. And since our application is an e-commerce web application, he wants to search for a particular product. He will type in the product name. So that will trigger an endpoint in the API Gateway. So once that request has reached the API Gateway, API Gateway will invoke the corresponding Lambda. Since the user's intention is to search, the Lambda will call an Elasticsearch service and get the searched content and get the corresponding product and send it back to the user. Now, suppose there's the admin logged in and he want to add a new product to his e-commerce application. So again, he will make authenticated request to the API gateway. So at the API gateway level, the authenticity of the request will be checked with IAM authorization. And if it is passed, then API Gateway will call the corresponding Lambda to create a product in the database. 
So the Lambda will talk to the DynamoDB and create the product. So this is the one way that we can implement our backend. But when we look at our project requirements, we had some non-functional requirements. Let me show you. If I go to the project overview and go to the security considerations, the first requirement is OO2 must be used as the authorization protocol. Since we are using Cognito, OO2 protocol is supported. So this is OK. Website must be served over HTTPS. Since we have acquired a certificate from ACM or Amazon Certificate Manager and applied onto the cloud front, the website will be served over HTTPS. So this is also fine. And third requirement is API Gateway private endpoints must be protected with IAM. So this also we can mark as done because after a user is signed in, there's a private user context passed onto the API Gateway level when the user want to invoke a particular endpoint. So that private context has all the user authorization content. So at API Gateway level, there will be an IAM authorization happen and if and only if user is the one he say he is be able to access the backend resources. But what about these two requirements? Database must not be accessible over internet. An Elasticsearch cluster or Elasticsearch domain must not be accessible over internet as well. Let's take a look at our diagram at this moment. Now our DynamoDB and Elasticsearch services, these are regional services. So once you create a DynamoDB, you will get an endpoint to call onto your DynamoDB, right? Even for Elasticsearch, you will have an Elasticsearch domain. So those endpoints are public. So basically you can invoke those endpoints through an HTTP client. For example, if you want to index and document in Elasticsearch, you can use a client program and use the Elasticsearch domain to index a document. Similarly for DynamoDB, if you want to put a document inside the DynamoDB, you can use the endpoint with a client in order to post a document in a collection. Similarly, the lambdas that is pinned up by the Lambda service will also have public endpoints. So these lambdas can also be accessible with the HTTP client, right? So all these endpoints at this very moment can be accessible over internet. In order to avoid that, we have to use a different approach. So basically what we have to do is we have to have our Lambda functions within a VPC, a virtual private cloud. Now virtual private cloud is a private network that you create in your AWS account. So once you have created a VPC or a private network in your AWS account, it's your responsibility to do all the network related tasks. For example, you can assign your IP ranges and you can divide those IP ranges into different sub networks and you can create different security groups or firewall settings. So all those configurations can be managed by you. So it is your private network. So in this private network, once we have defined the IP ranges, we can create different subnetworks. So I have created one of these subnetworks without an internet access. So a subnetwork without an internet access is called a private subnet. So we place our lambdas inside that particular private subnet. So at this very moment, our lambdas cannot be accessed over internet. So that's good. But what about these two services? Now, in order to talk to these services, Lambdas has to connect it over internet. But as I previously mentioned, within our private subnetwork, these Lambdas do not have internet access. So how can we do that? Now, DynamoDB and Elasticsearch service provide VPC endpoints. For example, DynamoDB can place a VPC endpoint in your VPC so that through that endpoint, you can talk to the DynamoDB. Similarly, Elasticsearch service also can place an VPC endpoint in your VPC so that through that VPC endpoint, you can talk to your Elasticsearch service. So in the next slide, I have shown those VPC endpoints. Now these VPC endpoints can easily be configured using the DynamoDB or Elasticsearch service wizard. We will look at it when we are doing the implementation. Now, there's another problem. 
So at this very moment, of course, now lambdas can talk to DynamoDB and lambdas can talk to Elasticsearch service. The medium is there. But as in all AWS services, we have to explicitly provide permission for these lambdas to talk to DynamoDB and vice versa. So in order to provide permissions, we have to place a security group for our Lambda and the same security group should be applied to DynamoDB as well as Elasticsearch service. Or you can add multiple security groups and add those uh, corresponding security group to each of those services. So either way, once you had created those security groups and when you set a rule to DynamoDB to accept only the connection coming from that particular security group, then your lambdas within your private subnetwork can successfully call out to the database. Similarly, in the Elasticsearch service, once we have set up that security group, you can successfully index a document through an lambda function or do all those Elasticsearch related functionalities, right? So this is our architecture. Now there's a one concern I want you guys to be aware of. Once you put a Lambda inside a VPC, there's a small price to pay. When API Gateway receive and request, and it is trying to forward it to the Lambda, if that Lambda is not currently started up, then it needs to start up or initialize. So we call this a call start. When you put a Lambda inside a VPC, this call start time will be even longer. The reason is, in order to spin up a Lambda inside the VPC, the Lambda need to set up some network interfaces. So in order to create those interfaces, it will take some time. But we can take different measures to avoid this, like hot reloading. We'll come back to those in later implementation. I hope now the architecture is clear. So just to recap, for the front end and back end, we have serverless architecture. So in the front end, we have a web application hosted in S3 bucket that is serving the content through a CloudFront distribution. We have WEF and certificate manager, and also we have Cognito as our authentication and authorization provider. And for the back end, we have API gateway, and API gateway is calling out the lambdas that is inside a VPC, and the lambdas can talk to DynamoDB and Elasticsearch service through the internal network of AWS. So that is our architecture. If you have any question, please post it on the comment section. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thanks.